Welcome everyone to the True Exact Show. It's the continuation of Shark Week. I'm here with Eric, Brian, my new, my friend Dan is a new guest on the show. He really loves these topics here. I got the Hawaiian shirt brought back because we're at the beach. I got the surfboard over here with the shark blade in it. And today we are joined by shark enthusiast, shark diver, shark ex exhibition designer. Did I get that right? <laughs> Close enough. Perfect. Yeah, you might see him on Shark Week. You might have seen him on Shark Week coming up. Josh Blaylock, how are you doing, buddy? Thanks for joining I'm us. I'm great, man. Thanks uh, Thanks for having me. This is going to be awesome. It is going to be awesome. Now, before we get into the shark stuff and questions we have on what you do, just tell us about yourself, how you got into this field, and your love for aquatics. Sure. Uh, for 15 years, I was a marine animal care specialist. I mostly work with sea lions. And uh, I know it's weird to kind of you know make that jump from – from sea lions into, into sharks, but working with sea lions, you really appreciate what sharks can do. Because if you, if you want to know how amazing a predator is, just look at the skills of its prey. And a sea lion is one of the fastest marine mammals. It's one of the most flexible marine mammals. It's one of the most basically badass marine mammals because it has, <laughs> and has evolved with sharks basically chasing them all the way through their evolutionary history. Mm -hmm. So working with sea lions gave me a better appreciation for just how cool sharks are. And then I started diving with them on a regular basis and seeing them up close. And it, uh, that's really when basically the beach gets ruined once you become a diver. Really? Now, but growing up, how did you get in there? Like, were you always like in love with like uh, the ocean and animals like that? Was there anything else you wanted to be? <laughs> I grew up in Northeast Ohio and okay. nothing but cows and cornfields. <laughs> no oceans there. <laughs> no <laughs> oceans. Lake Erie is the closest thing you get. Um, and even on its best day, it does not have the same color blue as the ocean at all. Mm. But believe it or not, in Northeast Ohio, one day when I was a kid, I found a, uh, I found a shark's tooth, a fossil shark's tooth wow. in this little creek in Northeast Ohio. And I was just like, what is this all about? And <laughs> I, I just got right into it and you know, was just fascinated with the ocean ever since. And that's really kind of what, what spurred my career path of working with marine animals. And now, you know, as I'm older and, and helping to educate others in my job of, you know, habitat designing and exhibit designing, things like that, kind of, kind of, you know, take that fascination I had as a kid and be like, okay, what is a kid now in 2020? What's going to kind of get them excited? And that's really, uh, you know, been an important part of, of, of what I do now. Now you in Northeast Ohio though, mm -hmm. with no oceans around, but being fascinated by it, did you just have to, I hate to age you here, encyclopedia <laughs> a lot of things? Like how did that work? <laughs> did, did you did oh. you travel a lot? <laughs> Sorry about that. No, no, that's did fine. I, draw I, you I, pictures and tell <laughs> the tales of the ocean. <laughs> Yeah, it was on caves. Uh, <laughs> yeah. my, my dad would make me hold a torch while he threw it on the rocks. Uh, ass. No, he. Uh, <laughs> I went to this place called the library. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it's it, think of think of like the internal hard drive of Google, where you have to go look up stuff into yeah. like you have to walk in a space to go find out a topic that you like. Josh, no, I've walked past <laughs> plenty of libraries in my life. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Fair yeah. enough. Um, but yeah, no, I just, I, I just saturated myself with it. And Shark Week started in 1989. Yeah. yeah. Shark Week started when I, was, uh, when I was seven years old. And basically just watching all the way through, you know, stuff like that with the movie Jaws, uh, Jurassic Park, other, you know, those type of really cool, exactly. Those type <laughs> of really cool, uh, you know, those really uh, – inspirational style of, of films and, and type of media back in the day. It just kind of, just kind of kept it going and I couldn't get enough. So what did you mean before by saying when you start diving, you don't want to be on the beach? Cause that caught my attention right away. <laughs> are, are any of you guys divers at all? No, no, but uh, I, I Dan, know how to dive in a pool. Yeah, Dan's I've done it once and it freaked me out. Well, it, Basically, what I meant by once you start becoming a diver, the ocean becomes basically it, it's useless. It's boring because there's so much more cool stuff beyond the waves. Once you get out there in 70 feet of water and you go down on a coral reef or a sand flat or a sunken ship and you see how much life is out there, you see what it's like to not have any human influence anywhere around you unless it's a man-made sunken, you know, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. When you can't hear or see anything man-made for that 45 minutes to an hour, however long you can stay down, it's uh, the closest thing to 
basically exploring outer space that someone like me is probably ever going to get. It's right. uh, it's 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 a whole new world, and you have no idea what it's actually like until you're down there in a reef. Or in the case of sharks, you have no idea <laughs> how fast your heart can beat and how you can feel your heartbeat. And I mean, imagine ten Red Bulls at once. That was the first. My, that was my first experience with a wild shark. But what was amazing about that was that within a couple minutes, you see how beautiful they are. You see mm -hmm. how perfect they are in the water and that fear just quickly dies down and shark diving is probably one of the most relaxing things that i can think that i that i do now that's yeah. insane to think about it like is. that it that is, is relaxing no, <laughs> it is it, it, it's it's absolutely relaxing just to be out there and see them do their thing and they don't care <laughs> about us you know if there's some food available or you know a big chum bucket or something like that's all they care about that's what they're designed to do we are not on the menu. We are an invasive species. We're not mm -hmm. part of their. We're not part of their diet. So when you're out there in their world on their terms and just kind of observing them, there's nothing cooler than seeing an animal doing what it's supposed to do. Yeah. How many times have you uh, dove or gone diving? Did I say that? I think we're close to now over thirteen to fourteen hundred times. Damn. Hundred times. Yeah, yeah, as in I, like... I guess that's a lot. I mean. Yeah, it, it's... Uh, I got certified in 2004. I went to school in South Florida. So I left Ohio to, to go down to the to the ocean. I went to a place called Florida Atlantic University. You've ever heard FAU? Dunk F City, baby! Yeah, 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 yeah. Was that Dunk City? F, uh, or is that Gulf Coast, Florida Gulf Coast? I don't know. There's so many... Yeah, sorry. There's a, colleges <laughs> in Florida are like up. a CVS. They're literally on every corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, field goal school, right? <laughs> <laughs> Did your family uh, think you were nuts going from Ohio to, to, to swim with sharks? No, because they've known me my whole life. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they knew that that was going to be where I, where I was going to go. Um, yeah, just being I, – I didn't see the ocean until I was 18 years old. Wow. So going to college and getting into – I mean, that was, that was a little bit of a culture shock, a learning experience for me, and then just totally immersed in that, you know, coastal and – ocean vibe by uh yeah Josh, so after that Josh, first dive oh, go ahead so, uh, just really quick you said you didn't see the ocean or you're 18 now this uh -huh. probably had a long lasting effect on if you still wanted to continue with ocean life did, which ocean did you see because if it was the jersey shore there's no chance in hell <laughs> you would have stayed with the ocean life <laughs> no i saw I, I saw the ocean for the first time in uh the outer banks of north carolina okay um, a little better that makes sense. yeah, yeah. So you which, have a syringe in your arm when you jump in <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're like, I'm going to Ohio. This is <laughs> <laughs> No, it was kind of just like, holy crap, it's huge. You know, just when yeah. you're at the beach and looking out and seeing that whole horizon. Yeah, yeah, it was uh yeah, it was it was pretty cool. And then yeah, five five, six years later when I went in and dove for the first time and that's when it all changed and I'll yeah, I'll never go to the beach again. It's boring. Go on, Dan. And I know you said that basically after that first one where you it felt like you were having like those red bulls and everything, just that excitement. Yeah. Have there ever been any other like situations that like you felt kind of like sketchy, like maybe swimming around like ships or anything like that, where you're just like, oh, I don't really feel like comfortable in this like situation right now, or anything like that? In, in my in, in entire experience diving or, or being out in the ocean, the thing that has uh, spooked me the most was a, a grouper, of all things, uh, diving on a wreck off of uh, West Palm Beach, Florida, and it was a uh, it was a night dive, so we uh, we went in at twilight. And then it came up and then went down again when it was pure pitch dark out about probably 9.15 at night. And uh, we were diving in this wreck and shining a flashlight into the hold of this sunken ship. And then all of a sudden you just see two eyes start shining back at you. Oof. And then it starts coming towards you. And a grouper, a big Goliath grouper, is a Volkswagen Beetle-sized fish. And it just, it just, its eyes were shining back and it just came. And that was when I was like, Oh, you know, yeah. what, what, what James yeah. Cameron movie did I just enter, uh, <laughs> with, you know, it was, yeah, it was amazing. That was the only time I was sketched out, but it was only until I realized what it was. I'm like, you know, this is it. Wow. How you say that, um, going to the ocean now got ruined. It just reminds me of that's how we feel about Atlantic city. Once you go out to Las <laughs> Vegas, I mean, that's it. You come back and Atlantic city is completely ruined. There's <laughs> nothing to go there for. Absolutely nothing. What, whatever you need to do to, to relate it to your, yeah, that's, 
<laughs> that's perfect. That's pretty much so it. The Applebee's <laughs> to Buffalo Wild Wings, if you will. Exactly. <laughs> that's that's actually probably a better comparison, I think. Thank you very much. Applebee's and B-dubs, yeah. <laughs> now, I know one thing you wanted to touch on. You messaged us about. The Jaws myth in the movie. Oh, yeah. Right? That's, yeah, that's a Let's popular movie I've heard. Quick, and then we could go back to the diving <laughs> stories. Why is there myths involved in Jaws? Is it that accurate? It Was it you being like a shark expert or you just like, <laughs> I don't even, I can't even watch this anymore? No. Actually, I'll tell you, I am in love with the movie Jaws. Okay. And I'll tell you why. In 1974, 1975, when this movie came out, it was the first summer blockbuster. Yes. Nobody knew anything about sharks in 1974. Yeah. And after Jaws came out, there was a 400% increase in published shark research papers in scientific journals in the, the following you know, five years after that. 400% increase. That is, that is art basically learning or, or basically teaching us about life or getting yeah. us inspired to learn more about reality. And the more they studied sharks after Jaws, they realized how absolutely absurd the actual plot line to Jaws was, but it didn't matter. It was already in America's psyche. Everyone has that soundtrack now when they enter the ocean. Yeah. You can't help but hear those two chords yeah. on the piano that yeah. uh, I guess when Steven Spielberg first heard it, John Williams played him the dun, 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 dun. He thought it was a joke. Because mm. if you think about it now, it's, right, it's only two, bum, bum. Bum, yeah. bum, bum, yeah. bum, 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 and then it's just faster. Yeah. Um, I so can play it, that. It, 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 was, it was so well done. And it was so well done because it was actually an absolute disaster. The shark didn't work for half yeah. the time. That's why you don't see the shark until the end of the movie. And that's what makes it so scary. Yep. When you I finally agree. see the shark, you're like, huh. Yeah. Okay, there he is. There, there's at the end of the movie, the beginning, there's just that one scene right from the get-go. My, my dad always mentioned this. Like, he went and saw that movie. He didn't know anything about sharks. And uh -huh. the minute you sat down, that lady dies right in the first five minutes. Mm -hmm. And then he still has not been back in the ocean. It's been 35, 45 years. <laughs> Lord of God, he will not go back in the It's like what Psycho did to people with showers when it came sure. out. That's what Jaws did to people. I went, and saw, yeah, <laughs> I went and saw Jurassic Park in 1993, and I remember uh -huh. leaving the theater, and I was like, dinosaurs aren't real, are they? He goes, no, nah, they're extinct. Fine, great. Mm -hmm. And we watched Jaws, and I go, oh, sharks aren't real, are they, Dad? Oh, no, they're real. <laughs> and I was like, all right, well, I'm never going in again. So you're right, right man. It had a lasting effect. And the only reason why people don't like it or why they'll never go in again is because they can't see what's coming. And that's what made Jaws <laughs> cinematography so good was that you didn't know it was coming but that wasn't yeah. intentional that was absolutely an on the call you know uh in the moment audible call that spielberg had to make because the the, the shark didn't work yes. so by making it suspenseful by not seeing the shark except for little bits and pieces here or there that suspense was built up and that fear of the unknown just boom it just yeah. hit you in that movie so your imagination work yeah yeah exactly perfect. i mean you think about it they made a pier that the shark pulled off, you know, off yeah. of the harbor into the water. That pier then became the shark. And then the barrels became the yeah. shark. And the, just the sound effect and all that stuff became that fear of the unknown. And that's yeah. unfortunately what got transplanted onto sharks and what scared people so much. And the scariest part of that movie is when they're like diving and I think that guy's head pops out. Yeah. <laughs> that's the scariest part of the movie. His yep. head just flies out. And it's like, oh shit, that's great. Yep. It was, uh, if they come up on Ben Gardner's boat yes. and uh, yeah, you know, he's digging that great white tooth out of the hole and then that really cheesy uh, Hollywood prosthetic <laughs> from the 70s just pops yeah. out. It doesn't matter. You still jump every time. Yeah. And what, about that, what about the moment where Brody's tossing the chum in the water? That's a pretty good one too. That's actually, behind. and that's then he the, finally looks back and he's like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, no, that's that's a, that's that awesome line of, "Yeah, come down here and chum some of this shit," and then the shark yeah. just comes up out of, yeah, that's oh, that's a great scene. That's also, actually the first time you actually see the sharks yeah. like up close. Hold on. Yeah. I also love the part where Richard Dreyfuss is like waving to the people, "Bye, you're all gonna die." <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. That's the best. Exactly. Thing. You're all gonna no, die. I mean, the, the the movie is the movie's fun. The movie is as uh, uh, adventure in it. It's a bit of a swashbuckling movie, and and I kind of was inspired by the character of Richard Dreyfus, the Hooper character, because despite all of that, the dude was just fascinated with sharks. Yeah, he was just fascinated with sharks, 
And, uh, you know, he helped Brody overcome the fear of the water, basically trial by fire. But no, I mean, a lot of marine biologists and shark conservationists to this day say that they were inspired by the Hooper character in Jaws. And that's yeah. just, you know, that's fascinating for all the quote unquote damage that that movie did to the ocean. I am almost wonder if, you know, it's starting to balance itself out a little bit better where the pros of that movie are starting to outweigh the cons. Well, I think after yeah. deep, I think after deep blue sea got made, people realize, you know, this movie wasn't that fucking bad. Yeah. I was going to say, what's more, what's more realistic jaws or deep blue sea? Oh God. <laughs> oh. I mean, it was Mickey Mantle beating up sharks pretty yeah. much. Hello, cool. J doesn't yeah. play. Yeah. Uh, shark. Sharknado is a documentary. Compared <laughs> to oh yeah. Blue sea. So, um, Sharknado could happen, and we had a tornado <laughs> pretty much in Jersey today. It was, it was rough. Oh yeah, you guys said Isaias come up. Uh, yeah, that's insane. A lot yeah, of trees there. Uh, so when like also, stuff like that goes by, does that like affect your diving, or do you like notice like big changes after like big storms like that? What's interesting that's is that question. there there's yeah, it's, a, it's an awesome question. I'm going to tie it into several different ways here. When when you're talking about big storms like that, and say sharks. There is a lot of research going on where they're actually going out and purposely tagging sharks before a storm and then following that shark to see what it does during that particular storm. Because think about it. Ocean animals have had to evolve with hurricanes for basically the entire existence of the ocean. Hurricanes are a factor of heat in the ocean surface. That's what they are. They're a normal phenomenon. So animals have had to adapt to it. Sharks can sense pressure. The entire side of a shark's body is one big pressure sensor. And when a, like a hurricane, like Isaias is coming through, that's an area of extreme low pressure. And if a shark is feeling low pressure, it's feeling like it's in shallow water and it wants to go into deeper water. So nature mm -hmm. has taught them, if you feel low pressure moving into your area, you could be into shallow water, you could get pushed up onto the beach, get caught into the surge, so head into deeper water. So what they've seen is that sharks and other fish when they sense that low pressure, a storm front coming in, will actually head down to the depths where the hurricane doesn't affect them. That's so cool. It's wow. amazing. I mean, it's, wow. a, it's absolutely amazing. And this is all stuff that we've learned just recently, probably even <clears throat> in the past decade. They're like, oh, I guess animals do have to react to hurricanes, don't they? And yeah. they followed sharks. They tagged sharks in a bay over on the west coast of Florida. Tropical storm came by. They saw on their radar that all of the sharks went into the deep Gulf of Mexico and then came back once the storm was gone. Yeah, I feel like humans feel like animals are dumb, but their instincts are smarter than most people. Oh, like, man. Like, we, <laughs> it's, kinda, it's weird. I, I don't want to get off on one of those kind of philosophical tangents, but humans, now, hu humans nowadays could not be more disconnected from the reality of nature. Agreed. Yeah. The reality of nature is not some influence, uh, influencer's Instagram post where they're, you know, communing with the fish. Come on. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's, that's bullshit. pretty much a difference. If a hurricane comes, a bunch of stoners start surfboarding. <laughs> like, and sharks are like, I got to get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 yeah. We're, we're, we're so, we're, we're so disconnected, but yes. The, uh, and that's why, you know, I said in the beginning, watching a shark in its own, you know, in its own environment is just beautiful because that's what the animal is supposed to be doing. We have mm -hmm. such a misconception about these animals, actually about most animals uh, yeah. for that, you know. These guys are not just eating machines that are out to get people. They don't care about people. They really don't. Yeah. A shark bite or a shark attack is a case of mistaken identity. The person goes into the, uh, into the water at the wrong time. They're going swimming with fish that the shark is actually hunting. They're swimming around seals when the great white is going for, uh, you know, the seals, things like that. It's a, it's a case of mistaken identity. Humans are not on the shark's menu. Yeah. Why is it? Is it just because of like scent that like we give off in the water or anything like that? Is there no, like it's a just reason why? It's yeah. because of the, their their whole their uh, all of their senses are for their particular prey. You know, like a, a hammerhead. The reason why a hammerhead. I'll fix the camera. You see that guy right up there above me? Right. Yeah. yeah. You see that weird hammer-shaped head there? That's called a cephalofoil. And basically how they've evolved is that their head has spread out because underneath, right where my finger is, all along the bottom of the hammer <clears> is nothing but electrosensory organs lying the, 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 the bottom of that hammer. So as a stingray is hiding in the sand or a fish is trying to get away, that is one, it's just basically like a, 
like a you know the the old, fat, the, the old fat guy at the beach with the metal, metal detector, detector swinging back and forth getting that strong beep that hammer is going for that sensation of the breathing stingray those electrical impulses and then it can zero in and boom go down and smash into that stingray that's why they have the hammer head like that they're they're not going after people they're designed to go after stingrays great whites like lift up your shirt let's show the jaws it yeah. would have been great if you, you lifted your shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Take your shirts off, everybody. <laughs> Talk about a great white. He's a little pale under that. Um, <laughs> so anyway, so you see that on a great white there. You see those teeth. And they're, those gums. The gums above a great white's teeth. Okay, you can sit down now. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> the gums above a great white's teeth are full of basically sensation things as well, almost like our fingertips, sensory neurons. So when a great white bites, it's feeling with its feeling with its gums what it's actually biting into. Like boom, this is a big fat juicy seal, big bite, boom. And then the seal bleeds out and the white shark goes and finishes the kill. Or it's a fish, it takes a bite, boom, soft fish, I bite onto that. When a great white bites a human, there's not even the biggest one of us there's not enough there for them to be like, oh, this is, a, this is a worthwhile meal. So normally what happens is a shark attack is normally that investigative bite to see what it is, but that's enough to do enough damage where, you know, the human bleeds out, something like that. But that's not always the case. I mean, have sharks consumed people? Absolutely. They're opportunistic. If there's a chance for them to get a free meal. They're going to get a free meal, but they're not, you know, actively hunting us. We're not on their menu. There's no shark designed to hunt Aunt Judy and Uncle Bob at the beach in Longboat Key. That's not what they're designed for. Ryan, do you have a question? Oh, uh, yeah. I was going to go back to the, uh, the pressure thing that you were saying. Sure. Um, now, is that something I, – I know that they have uh, certain fluids that are in their liver that help them with mm -hmm. buoyancy, and then they also have the dentine on their skin – which kind of act like little vortexes and help them glide through the water more. Do yeah. they feel it through like a, through the liver more like with the pressure or through their skin or the electromagnetic? It's actually through what's called a lateral line. Now I can, hold on. I can do this. It's almost like you knew the question he would ask. What do you, do you guys text each other. <laughs> I feel like a teacher working overtime here without being able to go to class. All right. So here's a shark's body right here. Toys. All <laughs> we're not gonna get into the toys you like right now. That's a different episode. So what do you do with that shark? If you go down a shark's body from here all the way down, they have what's called a lateral line. It's a series of pores that go along their skin that have nothing but sensitive nerve endings on this side too. So if there's a thump or some kind of sound or some kind of pulse in the water, they can actually feel it and then start and direct their attention that way. That's why they say the splashing of people at the beach <laughs> mimics the shark's natural you know, prey because sharks go after the, the dead, the sick, and the dying. And that's what those pulses are, and that's how they can feel it on their sides. So when a hurricane is coming and the pressure is getting really, really low, to these pores and to that shark's entire you know, sensory, it's like, holy crap, I'm way too shallow. I got to go deep. So they try to get away from that low pressure and feel that deep pressure again of you know, the, the deeper ocean. And usually it's enough for them to you know, let the hurricane pass and then it will go right back to their normal environment. But they, they don't stay deep that long, right? No. I mean, as soon as that pressure goes back up, they tend to, to, to head back to their normal area. So that so that rules out a megalodon being in the Mariana Trench, right? <laughs> oh, man. Um, never say never. Never say always. I don't uh, – I get asked that all the time about megalodons. I love megalodons. I uh, collect their teeth and all that. But, I, I, no, I, I, think, I think megs are definitely extinct. Yeah. And, and, if, and if they were alive in the Marianas Trench, then they've adapted and changed so much – that they're not the Meg that we would expect. Yeah. Everyone expects a Megalodon to be just a giant great white. And more than likely, it was actually something that looked very, very different. More like a sand tiger shark. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of, that's everyone's homework. Go Google sand tiger shark. Or go to a library if you're old like me. 
And, uh, but yeah, so Megalodon being in the Marianas Trench, I, I, I don't think so. Could there be a food supply down there we don't know about? Sure. Are there some big sharks in the deep ocean? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Is it a 65 foot, you know, shark with a tooth that big? I don't know. Yeah. Now, do you, I know there's a lot of criticism with shark diving, but it's more on the tourism aspect. We touched on this with the previous mm-hmm. person we had on. Um, do you do you get criticism a lot? Like, are you the type of shark diver that brings them close closer to, to the ocean to feed them, or you're more out there? You don't want to endanger the people on the beach. What a lot of people don't know is that there's actually a, a a law here in the U.S. that you cannot do any type of baiting or any type of things like that within three nautical miles of the shore. Okay. So any place I've ever been shark diving has been basically with the, you know, only the, the sky rises in the distance, you know, those big ocean high rises there. Um, it's not like they're, they're chumming at the beach and people are snorkeling. It's, it, it's, it's a haul to get out to those particular dive sites. So, so when you're going out there, are you going for a specific like shark or type of shark or are you just whatever's out there is out there each time? The area I go the most is, uh, is off West Palm Beach. And they get seasonal migrations of different species in there. So the sharks aren't being brought in by, you know, one little charter boat here or there. The sharks are already there. They're there for different reasons or they're migrating through, things like that. The species I've dove with the most is the lemon shark. Um, lemons are really, really prevalent in, uh, in, in around Florida. And, uh, but I've seen tigers, nurse, silky sharks, bull sharks, um, you know, and uh, a hammerhead and, and, and yeah. It, there's a, there's a ton of sharks out there. America, especially Florida, is very, very sharky. But, yeah, as far as the criticism goes, I mean, there's not that many shark attacks in, in the particular areas where shark diving is, is common, uh, very slim to none, actually. So you think that if shark diving as an ecotourism, as an actual business, was bringing sharks in unsafely, you would think you'd see, like, a rise in, in incidents in the areas where they're actually doing that. And that's just, that's just not the case. How can you tell the age of a shark? Good question. Um, that's one of those things where it's kind of uh, based off of previous science. You know, uh, the, the more sharks that are tagged and the, the, the more that can be followed over the years. I mean, that's, uh, uh, it's a little tough. I'm, with some, you can do like that cross section where you kind of cut their, uh, you know, kind of look at their, their, their teeth and things like that. But that's not even usable because they are a conveyor belt of teeth. They go over 10,000 teeth you know, in, in a lifetime. So it's basically just uh, looking back at previous records and com- kind of comparing that size to what they know that the max size could be. Mm-hmm. So in, uh, in December, I got to go to one of the, the, basically the Mecca of shark diving sites, a place called Tiger Beach in the Bahamas. It's in the Northern Bahamas. You are so far away from any coastline, it's it's basically like you feel like you're in a prehistoric ocean. So no one's trying to pawn jet ski rides on you. No, no, okay. it's it. Yeah, it's the you <laughs> know, land sharks. Like, <laughs> yeah. There's no, you don't see land for the like an hour and a half after you've, you know, are heading out to that spot. You know, but you're in wow. the Bahamas. It's beautiful. Uh, ja Rule and Billy McFarlane are out there trying to have a festival. It is just nothing but deep, <laughs> deep. That was a fire festival reference I heard it's for those great. of you. I heard it's great. <laughs> for you millennials there, that was a fire fest reference. I bought tickets and I'm still <laughs> waiting on my seat. <laughs> Apparently, the, I think the documentaries were better than the actual festival was. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Tiger Beach, Bahamas is about 40 feet of crystal clear, gin clear, Bahamian blue water. And it's a home to tiger sharks. Big, big, big tiger sharks. And I got to, for the first time in my life, dive with tigers at, at, at Tiger Beach. And not just one, but at one point we had eight around the dive site. And that was no, I mean, it, it, they were just, they're, they're beautiful animals. Absolutely gorgeous. Like, I can't stress that enough. If you're being safe, if you're not being dumb, if you're not trying to hand feed them or pet them or touch them, if you're just watching sharks do their thing, there's nothing there's nothing that compares to that. And uh, yeah, I mean, that was, and they're very respectful to Bahamians. Shark diving is a big tourist boom for an island where there's not much, you know, there, there's not much in the, in the way of economy. There's not much of a, of a thing there, but divers coming over to be able to experience Bahamian sharks is what led to the entire Bahamas islands becoming uh, one of the first shark sanctuaries in the world. 
the Aren't entire tigers- island of the Bahamas is a protected shark sanctuary. It's awesome. Aren't tiger sharks like some of the most dangerous? That's what they say. Yeah. I, for my, I'm sure they are. And in dark and murky water, when a tiger doesn't know who you are, or if it's hunting a sea turtle and it sees you on a boogie board, I'm sure they can be fairly dangerous. And the, my experience with them, it was, it was weird. They made unbelievable eye contact. And I don't yeah. mean that in a, I don't mean that in a weird way. I mean that as in like, you watch them swim past you and their eye is literally following you. And then they just kind of swim away. There was such a hierarchy. They were so yeah. big, 10 feet, you know, 400, 500 pounds. Just big, like it, I was very intimidated, but I wasn't, you know, you, you don't get that fear factor. Do they ever like yeah. swim towards you to like check you out and see like what's going on? Like, is there like any like reactions that you need to do to make sure that like you're not sending off anything? Tiger sharks like to bump you. They like to, to, to kind of sense what's going on with that same uh, those sensory pores in the front of their snout. So I, uh, they just kind of nudge you. How, how mean, how annoying. <laughs> like high school bullies. But it's not <laughs> like, it's not like a, uh, it's like an aggressive bump. It's more like a, what's going on? What are you, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, holy shit, get away. Move um, it, nerd. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's basically what it is like. Just get, come on, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Give me my tuna tail, go back to Ohio, you know, get out of here. Um, yeah. I, I forget who I, I sent one of you guys a, a, a photo actually uh, on Instagram. Yeah, I was and, looking and in that photo, you see me holding a stick and then you see a tiger shark coming right at me. Maybe you guys, I don't know if you have the ability to share that photo. Yeah. We'll at post any point. It, yeah. yeah. So you can kind of see that basically this big female tiger shark was just circling around and she was just kind of checking me out and she was coming in to just give me a little bump and, and see what would happen. And it wasn't aggressive. Her mouth wasn't even open. Her head was actually down. And they, they give you a stick so you can kind of dig it into the sand because there's a strong current and they don't want, you know, divers to be blown off into the current. So it looks like I'm like, come on, I got you. But in reality, I'm like, holy <laughs> crap, there's a tiger shark coming right up. There it is right there. Yeah. Nice. So that's me. Yeah, that's it's a little, a little blurry, but that's my yeah. big ass right there on the left. <laughs> there's that stick I was telling you about. And then there's like that marble. tiger shark. It's like a Marvel movie. It does. Like it, does. it doesn't look real. <laughs> yeah. And that's my buddy, uh, my buddy John Garza there. He's a, he's a shark photographer and all that. Literally, he's taking a selfie of yeah. the whole thing. I mean, that, yeah. that dude's a badass. But <laughs> yeah. cool. that, that was probably one of my coolest shark experiences in the world was having an eight-foot female just come up and, you know, come up nice and close. And basically, I just kind of went, uh, okay, go that way. And she was like, okay. And then just kept swimming. Have you ever dove with uh, with Makos before? I have not. That's on the list. Those, those to me, see, a short fin Mako seems like the most terrifying. Like, it's like a cheetah. Yeah. Oh no, that's one of the fastest fish in the ocean. They're they're extremely warm blooded, um, and yeah, I mean the, the the their teeth are gnarly. What's funny yeah. is that on the actual jaws, uh, the jaws logo, those aren't great white teeth. Those are gross again. A little bit higher. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's the great white. Those yeah. teeth are actually Mako teeth. Yeah. But Mako yeah, teeth wow. look scarier than great white teeth. If you look at great white's teeth, they're, uh, they're more like one straight line yeah. that kind of goes across. You know, great yeah. white tooth, upper and bottom, lower jaw is pretty much perfect. Uh, when, but a Mako is all I was way wrong. I did this. <laughs> What's that? I said I was way wrong. I was trying to help you out and did this, but I just... Oh, yeah. No, that's, I mean, that's a perfect... Gotta go to the library. <laughs> It'd be great if I saw a great white in the ocean. I was like, those aren't even your teeth, you wimp. <laughs> yeah. You need braces. Oh, those, teeth aren't, oh, I mean, those teeth aren't scary. Yeah. Yeah, no. come closer. <laughs> yeah. uh, Josh, I got a little <laughs> fan. Seg- I get a little, I get oh, a little- look at that. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah, Not wow. over the Mako yet, but that's, that's definitely on the list. I got to yeah, go to either scary. Southern California, Mexico, or New England area, yeah. actually. Josh, I got a yeah. fan segment here. I got some questions for you. I posted it. Some people have some questions if you just Sweet. want to answer them really quick. Some of them are a little weird and out of it, but I think you got a sense of humor, so I'm just going to roll with it, all right? Let's uh, do it. Matt Brower, how difficult is it to evade a shark in open water if you see him coming? Evade a shark. From what I've been told from people way more experienced than me is that you don't actually want to try to evade them. I mean, you want to try to leave the situation as quickly, as safely as possible, but you don't want to do that all out 
sprint where you, you, you can't see them. If a shark is an, oppor- is, is an opportunistic feeder, if something looks like it's going to defend itself or if something is kind of holding its ground, to them that's, okay, this isn't worth it kind of deal. So always keep your eyes on the animal, but then you can kind of, you know, get yourself out of the situation. But to evade a shark doesn't really exist because they can outswim the best of us. There's no, there's no, if you're in the water, there is no evading a shark. You evade a shark by getting out of the water. Justin Mayberry, Justin Mayberry, how accurate was the shark's temperament in finding Nemo? (laughs) (laughs) Um... (laughs) How accurate? Uh, so, uh, so he's referring to Bruce. I would assume right. Bruce, the uh, the great white and Nemo. Um, I don't know. I mean, I feel like Bruce and Nemo was kind of going through that existential crisis of uh, of he wasn't able to self identify with his predatory nature, and yeah. uh, you know he was trying. I, I guess he had you know kind of been guilted, and um, uh, the, the, there is no conversion therapy for a uh, for a, for a predatory shark. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I think there's some more underlying issues there. All right. Uh, so as far as, as far as accurate temperament, uh, you know. Uh, Vinny, Vin Valcecchio, if Sharknado was real, how would one properly prepare? Um, a, a chainsaw, for sure. Right, there you go. <laughs> yeah, no, chainsaw. Yeah, and um, yeah, I think basically, if I'm remembering the ones that I watched or actually could sit through, <laughs> uh, I think if you're indoors, I think you're okay, right? Yeah, why'd they go outside? <laughs> 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 starts, and you're just like, I mean, go to this house now. I mean, look, guys, I'll be honest with you. If, if, if Sharknado ever come, becomes a reality, I would say just follow you know, the, the National Weather Service guidelines for any type of severe weather, um, <laughs> regardless of whatever predatory species might be, yeah. you know, uh, it, you know, kind of collaborating with that storm. Stephen Joseph, this could be a quick yes or no. Do you like the baby shark do 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 song or no? I do. Yeah. Okay. My nephew, my nephew grew up with that song and uh, that was a really easy gift for uncle Josh to be able to get. So absolutely. Right. Great. Who's your, do you remember the show street sharks growing up or no? Yes. Oh, All right. Nico <laughs> Kostopoulos. Uh, who was your favorite street shark? Big slam. Bro, all right, Nico, big slim. I didn't even watch that show. Big That's amazing moment. how you knew that. It was, uh, it was, it was someone's uh, knockoff, like Dollar General version of uh, Ninja, Ninja Turtles. Turtles. All right, yeah. last one. Hold on, hold on, real go quick, on, go on, on right. um, I wanted to ask this before about the hammerheads because you brought yeah. up that obviously their head is shaped that way to look for the stingrays that are in the sand. Mm-hmm. Are there any? Um, descendants like older older species that are like kind of halfway because obviously they they didn't come out exactly like that it had to have been sure. evolved over time you know and what's so funny like when you watch shows like shark week or shark fest or any of those documentaries it's very very easy for the narrator to say this prehistoric shark mm-hmm. and yes they are prehistoric but in the geological and natural history hammerheads are actually relatively new especially when it comes to sharks. Sharks have been around for 450, 500 million years. Hammerheads are only within the past 20 million. Mm-hmm. So they are a relatively, you know, they're a relative newcomer. All the sharks that we have today, you would not go back to the Jurassic and see the same species. You would see much, much different ones, all the same, you know, uh, you know physiological features, things like that. But there were no great hammerheads. There were no wing heads. There were no long fin, short fin, you know, there were different versions, ancestral versions of that. But mm-hmm. our present day sharks are present day sharks. Nice. I got a last fan question here, Chiz. Now I looked this up because I didn't know what it was, but apparently this is a real thing and I want to know if it's your shark sugar. I'm sorry? Okay. He said, is shark sugar a real thing? That's when you get so, apparently the human, if he sees a shark, he defecates and it's like sugar to the shark apparently is that true (laughs) (laughs) i'll be honest with you i have never heard that and i've never heard that expression i've never heard that i'm going to use that from now on (laughs) but i have never heard that my entire life that's amazing yeah um yeah Yeah, no i mean i'm i'm sure they can sense different parts of it but uh 
I, yeah, I, I don't think, uh, uh, yeah, a guy crapping his wetsuit is Chum really in the gonna, water with that. <laughs> yeah, that's not really what they use for chum. Okay, right. that's all the fan interaction we had. Those are the questions we that's got. That's a shame. Um, Those were such good questions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For someone who's been in a wetsuit, pooping in a wetsuit is the <laughs> worst thing you could probably think of doing. Yeah. And I'm, yeah, I'm proud to say that in my uh, 16, 17 years of being a certified diver, that has never happened, sir. You never shark sugared yourself? <laughs> never shark sugared. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they what, 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 I don't know what they call pissing in your wetsuit. That's for you know something. Oh, yeah. I'm try to apply that to any what you can <laughs> sure. like, you have some sharp sugar today. I could tell. Yeah, it's like, like it's like human sea salt or something. I don't know. I, what, what do you even call that? But there you are. There, there's there's two kinds of divers: the ones that pee in their wetsuits and the ones that lie about it. Right. You have to pee in your wetsuit. It's just a natural response to being in uh, yeah. in water like that. And I'll tell you, if you're cold. Instant, uh, you know, right. it's close. you got the 98.6 along your whole body. Exactly. It's I just apply tea. that to real life when it's cold. I don't even <laughs> need to be in the wet suit. <laughs> got to take the heaters out. And you just start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, remind I, me to, yeah. Remind me to never go sledding with you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Josh. Have, have, uh, have you ever gotten the bends before? Never. Thank God. No. Uh, I'm, luckily for me, like, a lot of the trial and error of diving had already been kind of worked out uh, from the time that, that I started diving. So it was very, you know, the, the whole decompression stop and letting your, you know, your body adjust and get that nitrogen out. Um, you know, the decompression sickness really only happens now to deep, deep, deep divers. Yeah. It's unless you're a complete beginner and you make a mistake or you come up too quick or something like that. I'm sure it still happens, but the teaching of how to not get the bends is one of the biggest parts of any dive certification now. Yeah. But now, no, I've never had it. I don't want to have it. Would do, uh, do people get anything similar to that when they go down like hundreds of feet in those, uh, the capsules? No, because the pressure in the capsules is remaining the same. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's kind of the same with going to outer space basically what humans have done our entire evolution, our entire migration across the planet is that we have either brought things that, you know, uh, that is within that range that we can survive, like bringing meat, vegetables, things like that, wearing fur to keep us warm. Humans are a tropical species. There's not much actual fat on us. So we need to be in warmer temperatures, but we've adapted to colder temperatures and colder climates, of course, through our clothing, through jackets, through, you know, things along those lines. So as humans move around, we tend to adjust that area to our specific needs. So yeah. when you're going down in a, in a, in a submarine, that submarine is basically at the atmospheric pressure that you are at the surface. So it's bringing right. that atmosphere that we need down there with us. The same as, you know, Elon Musk sending the guys up and crew dragon SpaceX, you know, those space capsules are basically, you know, the, what humans need in there. Real cool, man. Um, yeah. I got um, Josh. Before we get to our gun to your head segment, any other questions you guys have from Dan? Um, I know you went over like how like you're like you went to like your mecca already, but what are some of like maybe like the top three places that you would want to still go diving, and what's maybe sure. like top three sharks that you still would want to see? Yeah, no, I I, I have yet to see a white. I want to see a white shark. Uh, one of my one of my shark pilgrimages coming up soon is probably going to be Cape Cod, uh, Massachusetts area. That's basically what, what we're seeing kind of play out in Cape Cod over the past, you know, past 10 years or so is, is a coastal town that used to have an offshore predator like the Great White that was gone for 50, 60 years. So almost an entire generation grew up with no Great Whites. And then right around 2009, 2010, the seal populations in the New England area blew up to the point where we started seeing white sharks coming back to New England. And so it's similar to like what happened to that woman in Maine a couple weeks ago. That's really, and, and you know, uh, God rest her soul. The, the, the sad thing about what happened there is that that's just a case of the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah. That shark yeah. was in total seal hunting mode. And it was, a, from what I understand, it was a very seal rich area. And a human swimming and splashing at the surface, 
I'm sorry. I mean, I, I, I'm not defending the shark's actions whatsoever. It's not my role to because it's doing what it does. But a person at the surface swimming looks like a seal. That's, I mean, that shadow, that, yeah. that, that silhouette. I mean, if you look at a comparison of a seal and a person at the surface, there's, you know, there's not much difference. And in dark and murky water, it's been, you know, through instinct said, hey, go check that out. That could be your food right there. And unfortunately for that woman, that, that, that investigative bite to see what it was is just enough to bleed out. It's like having a bug in our food. It's like, I'm not trying to eat the bug, but there's a right. bug in my food. So it's like, you can't be mad at me. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's, yeah, it, it's basically just investigating its environment. It doesn't have, you know, the old opposable thumb thing like yeah. we got going on. Uh, they, mm -hmm. they have their gums. They have that mouth. The mouth it's is kind of the best. Yeah. It's kind of like me going outside with a wiffle ball bat as a kid and smashing lightning bugs. You're in my swing zone, so get the hell out of the way, right? Yeah. I, like I don't Scott's know hungry. because I have a feeling that you were aiming for them. The knowledge of wanting to do it. Hits him up and I think, I think that's around. called I, on CSI. I think they taught me that phrase is called premeditated. Think, uh, Ooh, but at yeah. the end of this out, yeah. It's, uh, Bug murder. <laughs> Any lightning bug lawyers out there? Yeah. <laughs> Bry, anything? No, I got nothing else. Eric? I'm good. All right. Uh, Josh, before we get to the end of the show, we like to do a gun to your head segment. Um, it's kind of like a would you rather, but we get a little creative with it, or we at least like to think we try to. Um, okay. We keep standings. Um, not to give you any pressure, but after these questions are asked, you have to pick a winner. Your favorite question, your favorite one that stuck out. I'm not going to say who's in the lead because last time the person in the lead um, almost got screwed over because the, the contestant didn't want to give them a victory. Uh. So um, <laughs> we're going to go with the newcomer first. Everyone asked five questions. Dan, this is your first time. No pressure. No guest okay. on the show has ever won this. So, Dan, go on. Ask Josh the questions. Would you rather have arms for fingers or fingers for legs? Arms for fingers. Yeah. Um, would you rather eat crusty toenails or a rusty nail? Oh, God. Damn. Uh, it probably crusty toenails, so they're edible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> would you rather be hit in the face with a medicine ball or have medicine for your balls? <laughs> medicine, uh, medicine for <laughs> my balls. <laughs> um, would you rather sleep with a hundred Cabbage Patch Kids or have a hundred kids throw cabbage at you? Oh God, uh, Cabbage Patch Kids. And the last one is: Would you rather eat crabs for the rest of your life or have crabs for the rest of your life? Very oh good. man, that's a toughie. Uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'm gonna eat them. I don't want yeah. them. Dan, that was decent. I'll give you, I'll give you some credit that for that. Was that was bad, bad. actually. Bad. Bad. Eric, you're up. No, I won last. You did not. With, oh, okay. All right. That's <laughs> All right. You have no car. <laughs> Would you rather travel everywhere by horseback or have the back of a horse? <laughs> um, a horseback. Okay. <laughs> well, you travel by horseback or have a horseback. No, I would travel by horseback, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. He understood, Eric. He <laughs> yeah, I, 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 uh, I really rather, do appreciate the follow-up, though. That was, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, got a, okay. okay. I stick rather, with my answer. Would you rather have to post on TikTok every day or listen to TikTok by Kesha all day, every day? I think I'd rather listen to Kesha. Yeah, she's pretty good. Yeah, hey, I don't get um, the whole TikTok thing. Yeah, me neither. Um, okay, you, have, you could hang out with one for a day. A tiger shark or tiger king? Oh, God, tiger shark. Yeah, tiger yeah. king would be pretty, pretty interesting, though. Yeah, I, I, no, I'd rather hang out with a tiger shark. Okay, would you rather be on Shark Week every year or be a shark for a week? Oh, Shark Week. Oh, God. Dang. That's a good one, Eric. Oh, <laughs> that's right up there with the balls question. Um, <laughs> I think I would, yep, yeah, shark for a week. I would want to. I'd want to do it. Shark for a week. Okay. Would you rather shark sugar every time you dive, or never have sugar again? <laughs> I, I th okay. Yeah, I would. I would. I would shark sugar. I would. I would shit in my wetsuit <laughs> instead of having to give up donuts. Yeah. Thank no, you, cheese. Yeah. yeah. 
Shit is shark. You just made, you just made me say time. on the internet that I'd rather crap my wetsuit. <laughs> Eric, that it? Yeah, that's it. I All, hope right, that's it. Cool. All right. Would you rather be trapped on a boat in the ring of fire or stuck on the toilet bowl with a ring of fire? Lee, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really know about this segment. Uh, yeah, I think I think I would rather. I think I'd rather be in the in the in the actual ring of fire, like the South Pacific. That's a beautiful area. Much yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would you ra- Would you rather listen to a Frank Ocean song or watch a Michael Bay movie? I, uh, I like Bad Boys too. I'll go with Michael Bay movie. <laughs> All right. <laughs> would, you, would you rather be chased by a loggerhead sea turtle or hit a logger in the head with a sea turtle? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd rather. I would assume the logger is a guy cutting down trees or something like that. So, yeah, I would rather hit a guy that's cutting down a forest with a sea turtle than uh, – because I have actually been bit by a loggerhead before. So right. I can actually go with – I'd rather, you know, hit someone that's poaching a tree with a sea turtle that I happen to have. Yeah. Who would win in a fight, a catfish or a dogfish? Catfish or dogfish? Uh, dogfish because they're actually – dogfish are sharks. Yep. And last one. Would you rather eat a cuttlefish or be known for cuddling with fish? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> All right. So that's a tie now with the balls one, the crapping the wetsuit <laughs> one. Is do I cuddle with the actual sleep with the uh I I no, I think I'd I'd rather eat a cuttlefish. Eat a cuttlefish, okay. All right. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> Here we go. I, Last five. I like fish, but not that much. <laughs> Last five. I don't like my chances now. I, I think the other three were good. Would you rather be lost at sea or watch Lost at the sea? <laughs> um, I think watch Lost at the sea would actually be kind of cool. All right. Would you rather watch Blue Crush or crush a sad person? <laughs> uh, was that Kate Bosworth back in the yes. day? Yeah, I, I'll watch Blue Crush, yeah. All right. Would you rather sword fight with swordfish or fish with swords? Uh, I, say the first one again. All right. Sword fight with swordfish or <laughs> fish with swords? I'm more laughing because you're already laughing. Um, I think there's some innuendos in both of those, and I'm trying to pick the one that's the least innuendo and I think that's going to be the now sword fighting. Um, Oh, yeah, I didn't I, even I didn't even mean it like that, honestly. Oh, see, that's why this whole game has me thinking that you're <laughs> No, no. Oh, okay, then I'll sword fight a swordfish. Okay. This show is taking a turn. Okay. Uh sea bass or lance bass? <laughs> <laughs> sea bass, the guy from Dumb and Dumber, right? Yeah, yeah I'll go with I'll go with him. All I don't right. want last one. Would you rather photograph a fish or make a graph using photos of fish? <laughs> Since I actually have to do that for work, I think I'll pick the first one. All right. That's yeah. your questions. You have to pick a winner now. Who had the best questions, the one that <sighs> stuck out. Honestly, it was it was a toss up there with the uh with the balls. I am gonna have to go with the the sugar, the shark sugar. Oh. Right to one. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh there were some great questions. That one really yeah. That Eric, one. congratulations, man. Hey, you Josh. About 10 minutes ago. Okay. <laughs> Josh, uh, plug your stuff, what you're doing, uh, your exhibit, if you can, the opening, where we can catch you, man. Sure. Yeah, if, uh, if you're, you know, when you guys get a chance to watch this uh, particular episode, uh, you can check me out with a gentleman named Josh Gates from Expedition Unknown on uh, one of the Josh, uh, Josh Gates Tonight episodes. Uh, they're on Shark Week, and you'll kind of learn a little bit more about, about what I do uh, for a living. But, uh, you know, other than that, I'm on Instagram at uh, wildside underscore vo i'm a voice actor here in atlanta as well so uh yeah feel free to talk sharks with me say hi um yeah guys i appreciate you having me on it's been a lot of fun and this yeah this was uh, awesome and, um, and one, one thing i want everyone to remember is that on a given year there are maybe five six people worldwide that are actually killed by a negative interaction with a shark and there are a hundred million sharks killed each year by people. And at that rate, we're not going to have sharks too much longer. Right. And uh, I don't want to be one of those, you know, I'm not, I'm not a tree hugger because there's no emotion and the tree doesn't hug back. 
but uh, there is, uh, yeah, they're, they're, it's time to start actually taking care of taking care of those guys because they're actually taking care of us. Oh, every oh time you God. go to get sushi, every time you eat seafood, sharks are helping that population stay healthy. That's their role in the ocean. That's what they do. We need to let them do what they do more. And don't be afraid of them for doing what they do. Respect them for doing what they do and be smart, but let them, let them do their thing and right. will only benefit at the end. Well, what's the one post you posted? You said um, sharks don't invade the ocean. They live there or something. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one of my favorite uh, yeah. shark memes I've seen is that there is no such thing as shark infested waters because that's where they live. Huh. Yeah. Sharks don't infest where they live. Yeah, and so, yep. globally, we're actually running out of shark infested waters. I really would love to get us to the point through positive experiences and through education of these animals. I would really love to get shark infested waters to become a thing again. Right. And I've taken steps to be a better person. I'm perfect nearly. So be like me. Don't go out there and kill sharks. A bold statement. <laughs> it's a very bold statement. I'm not perfect at all. I don't want to act it, but seriously, I love having you to the audience. <laughs> I, love, I love having the you guys on. This is really fun. Everyone loves sharks. I mean, everyone loves the shark week. It's become a national phenomenon. I know it's been around since 88, but the past 10 years, it's just really taken off. So uh, off. Josh, man, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate it, buddy. Thank you guys. It was a blast. I hope to maybe be on again with you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. All right. Take care, everybody.